Greetings, nerdlings. Today, we're going to be talking about tropisms and photoperiods. Tropisms are basically the way that plants respond to their environment. So just like we as humans respond to things like heat, if I touch something that's hot, ow, I'm going to pull my hand away. I respond to the cold. I respond to touch. I respond to warmth. So plants respond to their environmental stimuli, such as light, gravity, and touch by growing either towards or away from that stimulus. And those responses are called tropisms. There are three main types of plant tropisms. Those are phototropism, which is the growth of a plant towards a light. And we call that a positive tropism. It's growing towards the source. So up here, you can see the plant growing towards the sunlight. We also have gravitropism which is the response of the plant to gravity. In gravitropism, we have two different types. We have positive and negative. Positive gravitropism is exhibited in the roots of the plant. The roots are going towards the force of gravity, towards the center of the earth. The other parts of the plants, the leaves and the fruits and the stems, are growing against the pull of gravity, and we call that a negative tropism. The last type of tropism that plants exhibit is called thigmotropism. I always remember thigmotropism by thinking thigmo kind of sounds a little bit like my thumb, and I touch things with my thumb. Thigmo, touch. So thigmotropism, you use your thumb to touch something. So plants respond to touch. A lot of vines exhibit this property, so they'll wind around whatever you put next to them. You'll see ivy plants wrapping around buildings. If you put off a stake, you'll see some vines growing around them. So here's a bigger example of phototropism. Again, if the plant is exposed to a light source, that plant is going to grow towards the light, and that's a positive tropism. Thigmotropism is when the plant responds to touch. So as you can see, this vine right here is wrapping around the stake. Another example of a thigmotropism is this creepy guy right here called a Venus flytrap. As soon as a fly lands on top of that Venus flytrap, it sets off a response because that fly has touched the plant. So thigmotropism occurs and bam, that plant wraps around the fly and it dissolves the fly to absorb its nutrients. Gravitropism, again, we have two different types, positive and negative. We have the positive effects of gravitropism when you observe the leaves and the stems of the plant growing away from the source of gravity or against it. The roots of the plants are still growing down with the force of gravity, and that's an example of positive gravitropism. So now let's talk a little bit about photoperiods. If you break that word down, photo means light, and period is a, is a section of time. So plants respond to the relative lengths of light and darkness from season to season, and this is a stimulus called a photoperiod. A photoperiod is a major factor in the timing of seasonal activities, such as flowering and growth and reproduction of plants. A plant pigment called phytochrome is responsible for the plant's responses to the photo period. Phytochrome absorbs red light and activates signaling pathways in plant cells. Regular changes in these pathways determine a variety of plant responses. So if you look here, this is an example of different plants responding to photo periods. We have a long day and a short night a very short day and a very long night, and then we have interrupted night. So short day plants. Short day plants will not flower when they're exposed to long amounts of light. They will only flower when they're exposed to very short amounts of light and a very long amount of dark, and we call these short day plants. They will also not flower in an interrupted pattern where there's a long period of darkness with a short spurt of light and then another long period of darkness and a long period of light. Those will not flower in instances such as that. Long day plants such as these lilies right here, irises, flower whenever we have long days and short nights. 
They will not flower whenever we have a very short day and a very long night. Unlike the short day plants though, these irises will flower in interrupted night midnight plants. So if we have an interruption of dark light, dark light, the iris or the short day type of plants will actually flower. So during winter, the pigment called phytochrome regulates the change in activity that prepares deciduous plants for dormancy. As cold weather approaches, deciduous plants, think about deciduous forests, those are made out of the trees that actually shed their leaves, such as those really, really huge oak trees. Coniferous forests are the ones that are made out of pine trees and fir trees that never shed their leaves, and they have needles, and they've adapted to that environment. Deciduous plants, on the other hand, have adapted to their environment by shedding their leaves in order to conserve their energy. By shedding their leaves, it shuts off a lot of photosynthetic pathways, it shuts off transport of materials from the leaves to the roots, and it also seals off the leaves from the rest of the plant. In autumn, many flowering plants in temperate regions lose their leaves. Oxen production drops while ethylene production increases. And if you remember, oxen is what helps plant grow and elongate them. Ethylene helps plants stop growing. And the change in the relative amounts of these types of plant hormones starts a series of events that gradually shuts down to the leaves. But in the process, it makes a gorgeous view. So I hope you guys learned a lot when we talked about plant introductions, we talked about plant hormones, we talked about plant transport, and we ended with the tropisms and photoperiods of plants. I'll see you guys next time.